Hi 4-H seniors, if you're watching this presentation, we're going to cover the senior only level insects that need to be known in the order Coleoptera. Seniors also make sure that you have reviewed the junior insects as well as the intermediate insects. But if you're a junior or an intermediate, these insects aren't going to apply to you as far as the entomology contest goes, the 4-H contest goes. So there's a lot of insect seniors that you guys are going to have to know in this order Coleoptera, a lot of additional ones. And unfortunately, some of them kind of look the same, and some of, but, but fortunately enough, a lot of them are very unique. So if you recall, to be a Coleoptera, um, you have a hardened elytra. That elytra are the hard front wings that when they meet in the middle, make a perfect line down the middle. That's how you know it's Coleoptera. They have a, a complete life cycle. They have chewing mouth parts as adults and as larvae. And they vary as far as if they're good, bad, or what they're found on. So the first one that seniors only need to know is the carpet beetle. Carpet beetle kind of looks like carpet, right? Or it, it, it's mottled, it's kind of speckled in color. It has these little scales all over its body. The larvae are hairy um, and they can kind of like break off and irritate your skin a little bit. These guys are a pest. Um, uh, the, the host for them is wool carpets, but they're, they also find, they feed on anything that has high protein. So some species are even known to feed on like dried cheeses and jerkies and things like that. Huge pest if you have deer hides, deer heads, or um, uh, any kind of an, an animal that you've had taxidermied, sometimes they'll start to, they can potentially start to feed on those things. So could be a very, very bad pest, but they also like wool. Um, wool carpets is what they're found on, but they could also be on your wool jackets and things, wool coats. Carrion beetle is a beetle that feeds, carrion is dead stuff. So this is a beetle that feeds on dead animals. That's its host. It helps break those things down. So it's beneficial because it's composting. They, what makes them unique, and these are two different types of carrion beetles. I think that the one on the left is the picture that, or the specimen that you will get for the contest. Kind of looks like a cockroach, but it has that line down the middle that tells you that it's not. It's got to be a beetle. And their abdomen always pokes out on the hind end. And that's kind of how you know it's a carrion beetle versus other things. So beneficial, feeds on dead animals. We've got our click beetles. Um, this is like the two-eyed eastern click beetle or something like that. This is probably the one you'll get on the contest. You might get this one as well. They have this really characteristic shape, right? And you look at them and you always know that you've got yourself a click beetle. If it, if you hold them in your hand, they will snap their abdomen and then you, they click and they pop and you can actually hear them popping. And that's a defense mechanism. They are considered a pest when they're found in corn and other crops, field crops and corn would be the host. They burrow, um, they can burrow into wood potentially. They're pretty generalist as feeders, but they will, um, they will do damage to corn and to crops, so they are a pest. The confused flower beetle is one of our stored products pests, the stored grains pest. It feeds on food and it feeds on stored grain. This is not the same as that lesser grain beetle. The lesser grain beetle, you couldn't see its head from above. Confused flower beetle, you can see its head from above. But look how they're really tiny. If those are Cheerios, that tells you how small these guys are. So they're feeding on your stored grains, they can also feed on your food that might just be in your pantry as well. The elm leaf beetle is a pest. It's found on elm trees, so that its name makes it pretty easy for you. The larva kind of is the same color as the adult. It has they have black on the edges and yellow in the middle, and that's how that larva that the larva and the adult both look. Um, they kind of look like they could be a cucumber beetle. They're at least the same shape, right? But they don't have the spotting on them. So this is an elm leaf beetle. So don't get those guys confused. Pest, chewing mouth parts, complete life cycle, just like all beetles. And then we have the flat-headed borer. This is also kind of shaped like a bullet, but don't, so look very closely at the click beetle and look closely at the flat-headed borer adult. They're gonna be a little bit different. The pests are found in, they're pests and they're found burrowing into wood of trees, but they can also be in firewood and other things. Um, the adults are metallic. The, the click beetle is not metallic ever. So that's one big difference between them. And then 
the larva are flattened and they get the name flat-headed borer because if you look at that larva's head, it's a giant flattened head right there. Flea beetles are another pest. So we're, get, we're going through a lot of things that are considered pests for the seniors, it seems like. Um, flea beetles are pests. They're very small, kind of metallic and smooth. Like they're, you know, it looks like they're very smooth. That bot, the, they look like glass. They're very tiny. Some of those specks on that lettuce are flea beetles. When you touch them, they will hop. And you can't really see it in this picture, but they have these enlarged hind legs like big legs so that they can jump just like a flea is. So a very tiny flea. Um, doesn't look like any of the other insects, I don't think, at least on our on our list. Now we covered a whole lot of, we, we covered one weevil with juniors, we covered like four other weevils with the intermediates. Seniors, you guys need to know one other weevil. You might confuse this weevil, the only one I could imagine you might confuse it with is probably the boll weevil. But the boll weevil had those little, um, like, thick hairs all over its body, and this guy does not. So they are a pest. Weevils are all pests. Their host is alfalfa. It's an alfalfa weevil. And where are you going to find it? On alfalfa, feeding on the alfalfa. And so you get reduced amount of alfalfa that you can harvest and feed to your livestock. The locust borer is a really pretty insect. Don't get it confused with the cottonwood borer. The cottonwood borer was white with black spots. The locust borer is black with like yellow striping and zigzags on its body. So the coloration is a little bit different. Um, they're found on black locust trees. Uh, there's a lot of other species that look that can look like this one um, or similar to this one, but slightly different. There are, they're a longhorn beetle, just like the cottonwood borer was um, found on locust trees. What else? Uh, black locust is its host. It's a pest chewing mouth parts, burrows in there because it's a bore, the larva burrow in at least. Okay, now mealworms. Mealworms kind of look like the lesser flower beetle, but they are gigantic compared to them. You know, mealworms are what you buy from the store to feed your pet lizards and things. So in one way they're beneficial because they're very easy to grow. You can study them. In the, in, in the lab, and you can feed them to other things. Humans eat them, but also pets and other insects will eat them. They're also used for fish bait. However, in stored grain, they become an issue, and they so they like to eat, if, if you raise them, you feed them oatmeal, basically. They like to eat stored grains. They especially like it when that grain is um, kind of getting moldy and stuff. So usually, you're not gonna eat it after a mealworm was in there anyway. Okay, this guy is actually an aquatic beetle, and this is the first one that we've looked at, at least for senior-only orders, senior-only beetles that are beneficial. And so uh, these are kind of neat. They breathe by rising to the surface tail end up, and I think the reason why they do that is they will gather bubbles at the surface and then take the bubble and, and drink the air from it. Um, but they're found in ponds. Um, they like kind of still water. They don't really like fast-running water. So they are an indicator of water quality, but maybe not necessarily good water quality. Beneficial because they eat mosquitoes and other pests that might be in that water. Aquatic and pretty, very small. They look kind of like another beetle we'll look at, but I'll, I'm gonna tell you a trick about those guys. Okay, rove beetles are considered inconsequential. These guys are found at lights, but they're, they're kind of like carry-on beetles where they will feed on dead things. Um, just found under a bunch of stuff. In On the contest, it's saying that their host is at lights. They're predaceous. They are also, um, they feed on dead stuff. Look that term up. Know what it means to feed, to, be a, uh, to feed on dead things? I think it's necrophagous, I think is what it is. But Google that because for seniors especially, that's going to be really important. Like there's herbivores, right? There's carnivores, they're predaceous. There's they're omnivorous, or they feed on decaying organic matter, or they feed on dead things. So know what those two terms are. All right, sawtooth grain beetles, we're going back to another type of stored products pest. Sawtooth grain beetles are found in stored grain, like the other ones. So you might get a question on the contest. Name three beetles that are a stored grains pest. Sawtooth grain beetle, lesser grain borer, 
mealworm. And actually, I can think of a fourth one, the um, false um, confused flower beetle. These guys are different. Um, they maybe could be confused for maybe the confused flower beetle because they're kind of the same size, but they have a zigzag. They have this little saw looking thing on the edges of their thorax. That's how I know that it's that guy. Soldier beetles are um, very similar, at least in my opinion, to blister beetles. So don't get the two of those guys confused. I think it's this this soldier beetle down at the bottom that is the picture that you will see on the contest, I believe. But Google and see a bunch of different pictures of what soldier beetles look like. Their, their abdomen kind of pokes out a little bit. Um, soldier beetles are inconsequential. They are pollinators, but they also feed on pollen. And so they can also feed on the plant a little bit. So they're inconsequential because they don't necessarily pollinate that great. They also don't do enough damage to the plant to be a pest. And then tumbling flower beetle is a cute little tiny thing. I would think that you might get this confused with the carpet beetle because they have that, those little scales all over their body. They're also considered inconsequential, although they are pretty good. Um, they're also pretty good pollinators. They are found on flowers. That's how they get their name, tumbling flower beetle. The adults might feed on the stems and the dead wood, but they also are going after the pollen. And they have a pointed tip at the end of their abdomen with that fuzzy kind of face to it, a uh, fuzzy kind of a body. So that's how I differentiate them from other things. And they're very small too. Okay, I think we just have two more. And the last two are aquatic insects. Um, so water scavenger beetle kind of looks like the predaceous diving beetle. But the big difference, and I'm just going to make sure that I'm right on this. Yes, the big difference for the water scavenger beetle is it's usually larger, but also they have this spine on the underside of their thorax, on the, on the side of their belly. It's not a piercing sucking mouth part. It's just a spine that comes off and pokes down. And I don't know what its purpose is to it, but if you see the spine, you've got yourself a water scavenger beetle. So uh, for the contest, let's hope that maybe it shows that, the spine on its belly. If you're a senior and, um, so for the district contest, it's usually gonna be a picture, but for the state contest, it's probably going, it's gonna be a specimen. It's not probably, it will be a specimen. Raise your hand and ask if you can look at the ventral side, if you can look at its belly. All they can tell you is no, but that's the best way to tell if it's a water scavenger beetle. Um, so found in streams, feeding on decaying organic matter, and they're usually brown and black. Okay, whirligig beetle. Big difference between a whirligig beetle and this guy, or the predaceous diving beetle, these guys have long legs in the back that act as oars to help them um, move. A whirligig beetle has short middle and back legs and long front legs. So the legs are opposite. Um, they're aquatic. Actually, I'm sorry, the water scavenger beetle is considered inconsequential, and so is this whirly gig beetle. However, the predaceous diving beetle is considered beneficial. So aquatic, they scurry on the water surface. The, uh, they have a really cool adaptation where the eyes are divided so they can see above and below the water, and they say they smell like apples. I don't really know anything about that. So that's all of our, those are all of our insects that seniors need to know for coleoptera. Um, good luck studying these guys. It's a very large and diverse group, but um, it's, it's actually a very interesting group to study.